Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We'll be talking with Dr. Jay Backstrom and Ted Miles this morning. Uh, Dr. Backstrom is president and CEO, and Ted Miles is COO and CFO of Scholar Rock. Scholar Rock is a phase three clinical stage biopharmaceutical company. They're joining us to talk about the new Topaz 36 month uh, extension data. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Both Dr. Backstrom and Ted Miles, thank you both for joining us. Oh, thank you, Neil. Uh, Scholar Rock, give us a, a little uh, insight into Scholar Rock and what it is that you do there. Sure, happy to. This is Ted Miles speaking. Uh, thanks for the opportunity this morning. Um, so, Scholar Rock was founded on the scientific insights of Tim Springer, a structural biologist and a, a very uh, prolific inventor affiliated with Boston Children's and Harvard Medical School. In his initial sort of aha moment that created the, the basis for the company was. Um, exquisite selectivity, particularly in growth factors and targeting the, the latent form or the, the, the non-mature form of growth factors, um, rather than what everyone else was doing was chasing and, and targeting the more mature form, which is just a harder thing to target from a structural standpoint. Um, once he had that scientific, that, that discovery or that, that moment, he huddled with a number of folks and they decided how to, how to direct this scientific insight. And so now as we sit here, more than 10 years later, we are very, very good at designing antibodies and selectively designing these to have exquisite impact. And we've got a, a program and a platform that's yielded a lot of really exciting programs, mm -hmm. um, two in clinic, one in SMA and one in oncology, and a number of preclinical programs across a wide variety of serious diseases. Now, do you both have similar backgrounds or are they miles apart? Well, similar in the fact both of us deep in the industry, um, but we come at it from different vantage points. I think I'll, maybe I'll go first. My, my industry experience over about 25 years has been initially from the accounting side serving the industry, then on the company building side. Then I went off and spent some time in the investment banking side. So I helped biotech companies pursue partnerships, acquisitions, capital formation, then I decided I liked company building better, so I went off and, and have been on a number of different companies in biotechnology, more mature pharmaceutical companies, and now Scholar Rock, which is right on the cusp of biotechnology that's about to become a commercial company. Jay. Yeah, yeah, Neil, I'm Jay Backstrom, and I'm a physician by training. So I've spent the last 30-plus years, as Ted pointed out, a long time in the industry, mainly in clinical and medical research working to develop new therapies and bring them through the clinical trial and regulatory processes to bring those new medicines to market. I was very excited to join Scholar Rock as CEO last October. We have such a highly skilled and dedicated team, cutting edge science, as Ted pointed out, a very promising pipeline of differentiated products, including our lead, Epitogramab, that has the potential to be practice changing. How is Scholar Rock infiltrating, I guess, the Boston pharma market specifically? I think that the Boston biotech community is, is an ecosystem like no other mm -hmm. in the world, I think. Um, we're just really proud to be a part of it. We certainly strive to be an employer of choice within the biotech community in Boston and, and nationally in some functions. Um, and we also we have very deep connections and connectivity within the marketplace. One example is being a member of uh, an organization called Life Science Cares, which I've been on the board of for many, many years. The company's been involved with as well, where – the life science community in Boston and, and now nationally interacts with those in need and helps kind of lift up people who are impacted by poverty. There's there's an internship program. So we really try to make sure that Scholar Rock is highly connected to the ecosystem and also the broader community. This 36-month Topaz trial, you mentioned a pitogramab. Tell us about this compound. How does it work? And talk about this, this study, if you would. Yes, indeed. So, Neil, this is Jay. So, Epitogramab is our lead program, as Ted mentioned. It's currently undergoing clinical testing in our Phase three registrational study, the SAFFIRE trial, in children with spinal muscular atrophy. You know, as Ted noted, the science of Scholar Rock is focused on harnessing the therapeutic potential of a family of growth factors, referred to as transform transforming growth factor beta, super family. And the importance is they play a central role in controlling cellular process, involved in growth, 
and differentiation, including myostatin, that regulates muscle growth. Epidogramab targets myostatin, and myostatin has been referred to as, as the master regulator of muscle growth because it acts to inhibit the growth, or if you will, acts as a break. Epidogramab, by selectively targeting myostatin in its latent, as Ted pointed out, or proform, blocks or prevents um, it, the myostatin from becoming activated, and this leads to an increase in muscle mass and strength. By being very selective, it should avoid the toxicities that really have plagued other strategies that are less selective. And so our approach is really well suited to treat spinal mus muscular atrophy, which I refer to as SMA. Because as a neuromuscular disorder, the hallmark of the disease is muscle weakness and atrophy. What we shared uh, recently in the 36 month data, we're really thrilled to see, and it's the durability of the effect. As we'd reported out previously, we saw some nice gains in motor function scales um, from the 12 and 24 month data. And really what's important and what our data underscored is it continues to show that we're supporting the needs of those with SMA. From our engagement with the SMA community, it's clear that the community wants to be able to improve function. They want to be able to do more, maintain their current function, because there is a progressive nature to SMA, and to have more endurance and less fatigue. Our 36-month data underscored all of that. We saw the maintain maintenance of gains in the, in the scores of motor function, but also based on quality of life measures, we saw improvement of activities of daily living and reduction in fatigue. And then finally, importantly, we're into four years of the study, and we have over 90% of patients still on treatment, and that really underscores the safety and tolerability, but also underscores the maintenance and durability of effects. We're really delighted to see those data. Is your aim to, to complement or compete with existing SMA therapies that are, that are on the market? Are we talking about in addition to or replacing the current standard? Yeah, it's a really important question. You know, I think it's important to understand that SMA is a neuromuscular disease that's principally caused by a deficiency in a very important protein that maintains the health of motor neurons. You know, all of the current approved therapies actually work to improve this protein deficiency. But, you know, Anil, as in most areas of medicine, one often needs a multi-targeted approach to maximize benefit. And so while the current therapies act to preserve motor neurons, they do not directly affect the muscle weakness or atrophy. So our strategy is not comp competing at all. By affecting the muscle with epidogramab as well as addressing the neural component that current therapies do, the results of this multi-targeted approach really should provide further improvement for patients and really is an elegant solution where we target both the neuron as well as the motor or the muscle component with epidogramab. Share with us what's next for Scholar Rock, and then give us a website where our listeners can learn more. Yeah, very good. So what's next? So there our current study, SAFIRE, which is the lead program, again, that's looking at children age 2 to 12, and mainly those that do not have, that can't walk without assistance. We believe we have an opportunity to benefit a broad range of, of those with SMA, including children under 2, which we're actively working to start another study, as well as those that are ambulatory but need some additional improvement in motor function and strength. So we've got several programs underway. You know, as we also mentioned, we do have another clinical program that's uh, right now under um, assessing co a combination with pembrolizumab and immuno-oncology, the DRAGON study. Again, another opportunity where our science, we believe, can overcome an important question of, of overcoming resistance to checkpoint inhibitors. We've seen some very encouraging data to date. And we plan to provide an update to that study called the Dragon Study later this year. So very, very exciting time for Scholar Rock. Um, Ted, do you want to say where we can learn more about uh, Scholar Rock for those interested? Well, we have a website, scholarrock.com. Um, and obviously, our, we're a publicly traded company trading under SRRK. So the SEC filings are also a good place to go. Jay, Ted, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much, and I'm hoping that you'll return. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Jay Backstrom and Ted Miles. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.